Good morning, friends. This morning, I'm doing a video just by myself. Um, many of you have reached out and asked how I'm doing. And many times we're doing great. I feel so blessed and truly that is the truth. Um, but I also have to be really honest. I'm not okay. Um, there have been some tough moments and we're continuing to see the digression of Mark and his weakness in many different ways. And um, unfortunately, we've been so busy with all the different changes that have been coming, um, all the beautiful benefits that the VHA has given us, um, all the beautiful blessings of friendship. And so there's so much to be grateful for. I, so please don't take this as, um, as I'm not grateful because I truly am. We're just in a season of so much change and every time something else goes with him, um, I grieve. You know, every time we get a new piece of equipment, I have that balancing act of I'm grateful, but I'm also, okay, now I gotta figure out how to use it. They show me how to use it, please don't misunderstand. Um, but then it's learning how to use it in our home and it's just, it's, it's a constant learning curve right now. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm just, I'm struggling. I'm struggling balancing um, my role as wife and mother and homemaker and also homeschool mom and caregiver for my husband. And this week, the Holy Spirit touched my heart and told me it's time to resign from my position as religious education coordinator for the St. Mary's and Nativity BVM parishes, which was an extremely hard decision to make because it's, I'll never forget the day um, Mrs. Jones brought the opportunity to me and mentioned that um, they're looking for a religious education coordinator. And I'll never forget when she said that they were considering me for that position. And I, I felt an immediate anointing. I got goosebumps all up my arms and up through my hair and even down to my toes. And I, I was like, whoa, Holy Spirit, what are you doing? What's, what's going on? And by the grace of God, I was given the opportunity to do that. And it gave me an opportunity to also serve in our parishes and also share our Catholic faith, which is something I absolutely love. I'll never forget our 25 year class reunion. I got a call, um, or not a call, excuse me. We were at the event and you know, everyone catches up. What are you doing these days? What's your profession? What are you doing? And I'll never forget um, when I shared that I was the coordinator of religious education, a lot of people are like, and you like this? this uh, and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so I'm not surprised. Um, don't get me wrong. I would have never pictured that I would be doing that position, although I love it because sharing who God is and how much he loves us and who we are in his image and likeness is a gift. You know, knowing that we have a savior and a best friend that died for our sins is huge. And knowing that he's still present today you know, in the Eucharist and through the beautiful gift of the Catholic Mass and through the sacraments, it's just such a gift. But also reminding other people that we are also a tabernacle and a temple. My last class that I did um, was talking about how we are a temple of the Holy Spirit and how we, how are we treating ourselves as such? You know, we don't always look in the mirror. We don't always see maybe who we would like to see. I think we compare ourselves and judge ourselves and really are our own worst enemy in so many ways. And really we were made so unique and so genuinely um, beautiful in, in what God wanted us to be and who he wanted us to be. And when we continuously try to be something that we're not, we tend to get caught up in a false identity. And so many times that hurts us more than we think it would help us. You know, and don't get me wrong, I've been there, done that. I think we all have stages and seasons of that ourselves. But um, in reality, I kept my position with religious education because I do love it. Um, I love sharing, sharing our faith with others. It's just such a gift. But in reality, I really wanted some normalcy. I really wanted to acknowledge, yes, I can do this. I can keep doing this. It gives me an opportunity to get away and be amongst these families and these students. And it just gives me so much joy. But in reality, I needed to face the fact that I'm not taking the time to listen to myself either. My insides are screaming, I'm not okay. And yet I'm saying, I'm okay. How many of us have done that? I've done it before. I'm doing it again. 
and I'm not okay. And that's okay, right? There's a lot going on. There's so many changes. Um, to see Mark changing so quickly is hard. You know, when something else changes, like we suddenly get a rhythm down, we get a new way of doing this, it seems like it's going really well, and then all of a sudden something else happens and we have to change it. And it's not that um, the things that we have to do are hard per se, it's just trying to focus and listen and um, learn a new way. You know, because the, the doctors, the nurses, the physical therapists, the occupational therapists, they've done a beautiful job trying to help us problem solve and think through ideas. But really, some of the best solutions that we've come up with are not only through prayer and discernment, but also you just got to try new things. You know, this isn't working. We need to try something else. This isn't working. We need to try something else. But that takes so much energy sometimes because it's just you're so... You know, sometimes these situations are so frustrating, you know, because Mark is also battling, you know, this should be so easy. But we have to remember that our normal that we were used to is not what we're living anymore. And um, <laughs> normal is just a thing of the past. Uh, we have a new way, a new way of life, which is okay. Um, it's not ideal. <laughs> by any means or stretch the imagination but for some reason God has called us to this he needs us to go through this for a reason I don't know necessarily why other than I just want to be obedient and loving and patient to him and I want to listen to the Lord and have him you know fill us with his wisdom with all of this and truly the wisdom that he was leading me to is that obviously I can't do it all so I need to let some things go. Obviously homemaker and caregiver and mother and wife are not things that I could ever give up and I hope God will never ask me to. But one thing I could do was give up that position and that is so hard. I'm one of those people when I take control of, a, a, not control, but when I take on a responsibility or a commitment, I kind of hold it like a baby and I try to take care of it. <laughs> and so it's really hard to let it go. Um, but we need to be humble, we need to listen, and we need to, to know when is the time to let go of these things. And so by the grace of God, my assistant, Kathy, God bless her, she is taking on that role of coordinator. I ask for her abundant blessings and prayers to be said for her in that time of need. I also ask for uh, prayers for a friend of mine, Jocelyn, who is going to be taking over my catechist role with the Family Catechesis Program. I love the program. I love the people. Um, I love the families. You know, there's so many beautiful opportunities, so many beautiful discussions that we've been able to have about our faith that are just so beautiful. So I, I will pray for that to continue and that um, the Holy Spirit will continue through the catechists um, and the families as they continue to learn and grow in formation through these programs. Um, till then, you know, God calls us to different seasons of time and commitments and ministry. And now is my time to step back and be humble and acknowledge that I need to be home. I need to take care of my family. And I need to give these other commitments to someone who can do them and fulfill them. And that's okay. That's okay. So um, I'm not okay, but I'm okay. <laughs> Um, I'm going to be reaching out, seeing if um, friends can help me with a few things around the house. There's just, again, I took for granted that Mark did so much. And so now I, I'm in a really big stage of learning a whole new way of life, a whole new way to love the Lord, a whole new way to love my husband. And, you know, some dear friends from my prayer group, um, you know, we prayed about this together a couple weekends ago. And by the grace of God, a dear friend reminded me that when I'm serving Mark, I'm serving Jesus. You know, we are all a tabernacle of the Lord. You know, we receive him body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist at the Mass. And so I am also serving the Jesus in Mark. You know, and I'll never forget, we had gotten done um, helping him with the shower one time. And I was washing his feet because he can't reach his feet anymore. He can't get them clean. So I'm washing his feet and all of a sudden, a knowing came upon me in the whisper of, remember why I washed the apostles' feet. Wow. We're here not to serve ourselves. We're here to serve others, aren't we? It's not always about us. 
In fact, more times than not, it's not about us. It's about others. And that's what God calls us to. And now I'm in a season where I'm going to be serving him more and more, which is okay. I made a commitment on that wedding day. I said I do in sickness and in health till death do us part. And I meant it. And I will hopefully, <laughs> virtuously continue to serve my husband with great joy and love. But of course, I can't do it alone. Please pray for us. Pray for me that I can take the time I need to grieve these stages. That's one thing I haven't allowed myself to do is to grieve every time something else is taken away. I'm, I'm not taking the time. Um, and then I had a very vulnerable moment with a friend, Anne, last Friday. And she asked how I was doing. <laughs> You ever have those moments where it's like, oh my goodness, I can't say I'm okay anymore. I can't say everything's going great because I wasn't great and I wasn't okay. And by the grace of God, she was that person that God chose for me to be able to comfortable, to take that time to just let those tears flow. God bless her for being a friend that listens to that and is comfortable with that. You know, I hope I can be that for other people. Um, and as um, I left my girls with the co-op, I went upstairs, we were at Nativity, and of course, who is present in that beautiful empty space? But Jesus in the tabernacle, and I just kneeled on the altar, and I just cried. Every drop of disappointment, every drop of frustration, every drop of fear, every drop of everything that I'm not, and everything that I try to be, just came flowing out of out of the deepest crevices of my broken heart with some of this and thank god we cry right <laughs> i think otherwise we'd burst each tear falling on the altar something to give back to the lord and say i need your help lord i need your grace i need your guidance i need your gifts of the holy spirit to help me with these tears so that I know the best thing to do next. And what is the one thing that he tells me in that very vulnerable moment? To love God above all things, the Ten Commandments, help remind us exactly who we are and what we are supposed to do to love God. And what is the second greatest commandment? To love thy neighbor as thyself. <sighs> We try to do that with our spouses, don't we? And our kids, sometimes we forget. We get caught up with the busyness of life. But by the grace of God, God knows. He hears us. He just wants us to come to him and give him all of this brokenness. All of this that distracts us from him. And when we put things back in order, we can truly hear him and live the vocations that God has called us to. But when we got married, we were reminded that we will never be able to do it alone. We need Christ as the center in our marriage. It's a Trinitarian marriage. It's a sacramental marriage because we can't do it alone. We need God in the center. And so as we move forward with every step of this, please pray for us. Please pray that we can be honest with each other, love each other, and to love thy neighbors, thyself, to love God, and to love each other in these broken moments. Show us a new way to love, Lord. Show us a new way to serve. Help us to know you more intimately and help us to reflect that love to others no matter where we're at, whether in the grocery store, in the car, whether we're driving, whether we're in church, whether we're at home. Um, Lord, help us to be a reflection of you in this world, even in amidst our suffering. So friends, thank you. Your prayers mean so much to us. Your love, your support. We have seen those prayers being answered. We have seen and felt those moments of peace, those moments of brokenness that have been suddenly turned around into moments of joy. You know, those are a reflection of a group of people that come together and pray. And what a gift that we have that. Thank you. Thank you. I don't, I don't even know how I could ever begin to thank you just know that we're praying for you too because even though sometimes we meet each other how are you and we always give maybe that generic response hopefully it's not generic hopefully it's genuine you know we might say we're okay but if you're not please know that I am a friend that you can be real and honest with and 
if for some reason I can't be that person for you in that moment, it's not because I don't love you. It's because I might just be having a bad day or we might just be having a bad day, but we will get through this. We also learn in scripture that this too will pass. So we just need to be present and we need to be grateful in each and every moment. And hopefully God will use this for the greater glory of heaven. He's got a plan and we can trust in it. So Lord friends, let's close with a prayer. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, I ask for your blessings upon all of our friends, near and far, family members near and far. Help them to know that they are loved abundantly even though those moments where we can't always be present or maybe be available to them. Help them to know they are loved because they were made in the image and likeness of God and that they are worthy of love. And Lord Jesus, take our blessings, take our suffering and use it for them. Use it in those moments where they are weak. Use it in those moments when they are most vulnerable or sad or depressed or maybe are going through their own season of darkness. We surrender our brokenness, our, our disappointment, our tears to you, Lord. Use it for the greater glory of heaven. We do this all in your most holy name. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. God bless you, friends. We'll be in touch.